Welcome to the 2020 Diamond Las Vegas Open, proudly presented by Q Sports International and hosted here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Our sponsors for the event include Diamond, Kamui, Omega, and Predator. This is our finals match. And now, let's meet our two competitors for our finals match. First up, our undefeated player in the tournament. Can we put our hands together for Mr. James Aranis. And his opponent coming up from the one loss side of the chart. Can we please put our hands together for Mr. Zong Rong Lin. Our referee for the match is Ms. Michaela Tab. And now I'd like to turn it over to our commentators in the booth, Mr. George Teachea and Mr. Jeremy Jones. Take it away, gentlemen. And we are live at the CSI Pro Arena. John, thank you for that fine introduction. Saves me from uh, boring you guys with uh, all of our uh, uh, sponsors and things like that. He just went over. But keep in mind, visit our sponsors. Jeremy. These guys have worked hard to get where they're at. Yeah, none uh, any more, more effort than these two, and that's our final two. James has come through the tournament undefeated. Uh, Chang's only loss is to James, mm -hmm. uh, and a great match that was. And I'll tell you, I'm pretty proud of this young man, James. He's a guy that tries hard, hits a lot of balls talked about it before I think he was a guy that had to get used to the setting a little bit more take his time working on that part of his game the mental side in these big moments um, and I think it's going to bode well whether he wins here or not so well he's faced he's facing uh, the best performance I think we've seen uh, one of them uh, Oi, Oi of put on one Oi heck put of on a heck of performance but, too also I mean, but just the quality of the outs that Chang just came off of sure. pretty impressive and here is a little dilemma. Does he come straight back with the one here with such a big pocket uh, with the three ball standing uh, where he's at? And that's what he's called. And I think that's that's a good thing to shoot at, I think. I think it's a big pocket. I think he makes it way more often than he misses it. Oh, he caught it a little thick. And he's left the rail first shot. Or can he, oh, he might be able to go at the straight in. No. Uh, no. He's hooked. No, I can see it from here. Yeah, and the rail first, it kind of goes, but it's got to hit the three just perfect to uh, be able to slide in off the three. Otherwise, it kind of just stands up right there. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to oh. be more of a kick and stick here, George, mm -hmm. with a draw English. I actually didn't see the three ball when I first saw the rail first. I thought it was outside the pocket. Right. Uh, Maybe even making it a bigger pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why I thought he'd go rail first with it. And then uh, once I saw that different TV camera oh, uh, angle. Not. I think he's calling the three ball, maybe. That's not a bad call, because if he puts the cue ball, uh, a little ticky shot? In other yeah, words, rail first. well, he's just calling it, I think. I think he's still trying to play this kick and stick, but like that. But no, oh, reason, no reason not to call the three, just right? Just in case you slide down for it, sure. Yeah, the rules really lay towards uh, really hardly any point, unless you're, uh, you know, you want your opponent to make sure, you know, they know that you're playing safe on a shot. Um, for some reason or another, no reason to not call a ball. And nice safety by James, just putting the ball out in the middle. Uh, does that make it a lot tougher to hit than, than being close to a rail? Well, for the kicks, for sure. Yes. And he was just knowing he was going to leave a jump shot. Um, he was just trying to make sure he was going to leave a tough one. And I'm a little surprised he's not attacking on the upper left. He's called... Uh, the corner pocket near the three, trying to play a two-way with the safety. But the cue ball, if he cuts it that much, the cue ball is going to come over like that. So there's really not much safety involved, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's come right back over again, yeah. Yeah, I thought with the seven on the upper left-hand corner, it kind of made that pocket kind of big to try and jump it and cut it in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah, plus speed. You know, when yeah. you jump that ball, you're not going to hold the ball behind that wall of balls. Yeah, especially if you cut it. 
you know, try to make the bank on the one. So a uh, great opportunity for, for James here. We saw in the last match it was some 6 nothing before Justin really got an opportunity against Chang at all. Uh, Chang played extremely well. Had three break and runs on his serve. Yeah, and then. On and his breaks. Yeah, and two run outs after an opening two dry breaks mm -hmm. by Justin. So He didn't miss the ball in the first four racks. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is where, because of the five ball is so funny, you may see him play the four in the side, not travel the cue ball. That way he can get to the underneath side of the five a little easier because the five does not pass the six where the three lays. So should be a couple rails here down to get close to the three. Yeah, I like that. And then he'll play the four in the side, which will make it a lot easier to get on that five, either in the upper left-hand corner or that same side pocket. And really the only one that hurts here is straight in, and that doesn't even hurt that much. Mm -hmm. You'd rather be more heavy and kind of straighter than a lot of angle on this shot. No, is he, he going to just pop this and go between the 6 10? No, no, he'll no. draw back for the 5 in the same side okay, or gotcha. the corner pocket. Gotcha. Yeah. I didn't see the opening there. It's experience. Well, I guess I have the experience. Uh, you have the knowledge. <laughs> well, since I'm the older one in the booth, I'm making a joke out of that <laughs> with the age. Okay, so it's a pretty steady, steady run out here uh, after getting that first shot. And don't overthink it here. If you have to move the cue ball, there's nothing wrong with that. Meaning if you want to address this and come above the 10 and take a little more cut on the 8 one way or another to either corner pocket. So a little inside and make sure you don't hit the 10 and come straight across. Um. Either way, meaning either inside or a little outside to get above the 10, just kind of depends on how you want to play it. I kind of like that coming across yeah, myself, that's, yeah. That's what I thought. And he's taken down the first. Uh, he's going to draw this to the side. Oh, he just spun it with outside. Nothing wrong with that. Kind of preference again. First rack again, the side pockets. He, you know, I watched a couple of, several of his matches, and he, he doesn't mind side pockets at all. No, and you'll see the guys, like I said earlier, um, more towards the end of the rack, use the side a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's really, if you happen to get on the wrong side of, uh, of a side pocket shot early in the rack, when you have so much congestion on the table, well, things can get a little hairy. But generally, when there's a <laughs> ball or two left, uh, there's a lot of room to maneuver the cue ball just in case you do fall on the wrong side mm -hmm. of, of a side pocket shot. So, and You guys were able to listen to an appreciative crowd there showing their appreciation for uh, some fine shooting by both players. Yeah, and the outer parts of this, uh, you know, the biggest room here in the BCAPL and the CSI amateur part of this event is starting to fill up more and more. I'm taking a few breaks to get a coffee in between matches, and it seems like... Uh, more of the amateurs are showing up every hour. Sure. And they have some, what, three big rooms here? Four big rooms? They've full got pool uh, tables? three rooms with uh, uh, like 100 tables in each room. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this one has all the vendors, uh, queue repair, the tournament desk. Uh, we've got a lot of pu people milling around the room. And about 34 of the 40 top players in the world by virtue of WPA rankings. That man right there in your screen is ranked fifth for this year. Well, a real square hit on the one there, and he's going to get a cut on the one. Does the two play on the side? Because he's definitely going to contact the four. Just watch how dead square the cue ball hits the rack here. Let's see it a little bit, but right in the center of the table. problem is if he eases this in, I'm not sure what kind of play he really has to get from the two to the three ball. Okay, he's not even messing with it. That tells you how 
the two wasn't really that playable. He's at the long shot. Yeah, he snookered. James has snookered. It should be a two rail escape. May swerve at this. I think he'll go for a jump. Maybe. Knocking it around table, I guess. Yeah. Thing is, when you have to fly it that far over the first ball, that being the it's seven, hot. really hard to control speed on both the object ball and the cue ball. So mm -hmm. maybe he's trying to pocket this ball rather than knock it around table. Uh, I'm kind of looking down the barrel. It looks like he's aiming pretty heavy on the one. So he's just going to try to stop the cue ball there and, and get around? Yeah, and that's what I was saying. I mean, the one slowed down because it hit the point. And he held the cue ball pretty decent, but it was hard to really control the speed of the object ball and the cue ball. Yeah. That ball was in the air for, what, at least three feet? Mm-hmm. And he's left a nice one-six combo. Incidentally, James is ranked uh, 31st in on those uh, top 40 rankings in WPA. I don't think he plays very many uh, international events, does he? Well, he's starting to play a few, but yeah, yeah he hasn't played many. Spends a lot of time in America. Mm -hmm. That's a funny little shot because you kind of want to hold the one because the one is a little thin onto the six ball. So don't lose track of the six and hit it too easy and not get it to the hole. Okay, he went in and played it over. and Did he come away with anything he wanted? Okay, decisions, decisions, George. Do you just lay him behind the three here? Real soft. Yeah. Why not? It's tough. To, it's tough to really um, uh, kick at. Well, most likely, if you do that, your opponent's just going to tie the three up on the one and look for a better kick shot. But I was wondering of this choice: Does he go for the bank that's kind of staring him straight in the face? Because he feels like he can get straight in on the two. There's your answer. He has enough to a giveaway. This, this, I. Look for James to make this pocket this ball and come over for the two ball. Oh, tough shot, though. Yeah. This is no hanger. And this is the one that don't baby as much. You can handle a little more bounce off the second rail just so you make a little better hit on the one. And he squeezed it in. It. Shot on the, three, on the two is nice. Yeah. I'm not sure he'll play the yeah, side, though. I was going to say, uh, it looks really tight in the side, especially get the cue ball all the way down for the three. Yeah, this is or just... Probably just leave it there for the three if he decides to play the side. And, and spin, take the, spin take the softly. Hit, uh -huh, take the cut there. Well, you spun all the way down. Yeah, that was surprising oh, well, there. look at this. That was surprising. And if there was any question there, that's a, these guys kind of like bread and butter cutting that ball down the rail mm -hmm. and running the cue ball a couple rails for the three. Yeah. Uh, Pretty surprised. Pretty surprised at getting snookered there. Well, that's that's why I thought he would just leave the cue ball yeah. by the side pocket. Just settle, right? Yeah, settle, and it's not a bad. Yep, it's like that angle anyway. You got to come up for the four. And well, now he's tied up to four or five. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to slow Chang down though. I think Chang's going to attack here, trying to go to the rail and open these balls. Yeah, that's. What it he could get stuck behind him just in case he doesn't come in correctly, mm. but. I think if he cuts it down the rail, he's going to be coming in with a little velocity. Not much, but, I mean. Oh, yeah, the angle gives him yeah. plenty of movement on the cue sure. ball. Just a matter of they could, the five could kind of carry with the cue ball a little bit. So he may try to come across the top of this ball. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. And this, we yep. Yeah, that's the problem there. And, and, and to help that, you notice how he shot that with low outside, right? Mm -hmm. To try and. Of course, get a little more dig on the cue ball, but it also slows the cue ball down when you do that. Okay. Meaning you're gripping it, uh, you're hitting the object ball heavier because you're throwing it. A lot of times when you need that movement to open those balls up a little bit more, try not to put so much outside on that cue ball. Just low? Yeah, just straight low, okay. a, a little bit, or a little less outside anyways. Ooh, oh, that, that was, was close hit. there. I don't know. Oh, she just, didn't call, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. yeah it was. Yeah, the, yep. he, he caught the five coming in and then again going out with the cue yeah. ball. Well, big break for uh, for James here. 
Well, yeah, and I actually saw a, a little bit of chink in the armor there, and not so much physically from Chang, but I think the shot clock kind of got to him. I mean, that was a position there where you leave those balls tied up and look for a better kick when the guy plays safe on you again, meaning just mm -hmm. give up ball in hand and have him play safe again on that four or five, and you probably come away with a little better kick shot. Um, trying to kind of steal the game with a kick shot, I guess. That's a good point. I, I would not have thought to, to give up ball in hand. I would have tried to go the long rail and come back and hit it. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, too. For I mean, speed. if you if you like that shot, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Big trouble. Second time. Yeah, and he needs to take his time here. I don't know if he's used his extension or not. Yeah. I think he may have, but well. he needs to take as much time here as possible. Pretty easy kick shot for these guys. Yeah. This is probably just don't baby it. Makeable. Oh, no, yeah. No. He stayed out of that one. He had to come just a little deeper there to catch that rail and go up from the for the ten ball. Yeah. Again, if I was in James's corner, I think I would. I know it's early in the match to use your timeout. Um, but just a couple of little mental things, I think, he's, more, he's more than physical. Couple, sure. Uh, sure. Because you know this man right here is going to settle in. Uh, no matter what. I mean, no matter the situation, he's just not going to see many errors there. So James is going to have to take full advantage. James is a new pro player for Predator. Yeah, less than a month ago. Yeah. You're about to see him uh, break with his uh, BK rush with the sport wrap, I believe. And it looked like the butt of his cue is that um, Pantera. I couldn't tell. I don't know. I just glanced at it right when he put it uh, uh, to the side and grabbed the break cue. Made me think of that. This is our final, ladies and gentlemen. It is a race to nine. Uh, one race to nine. Yeah, there's uh, no double dipping. It's you know, an extended Chung, race. Chung Jung Lin's uh, one loss is erased. We're tied at one. This is the final of the Diamond Open, but both these guys will be back here in just two days' time to start the Predator World 10 ball. And again, I see a different rack um, than we've seen Michaela. most of the tournament. Yeah. The way they're racking. And you would think that would be consistent because of the template and all balls touching they should all be touchy well i believe they are but I've, I've got some experience with the template and there's a certain way to get them in there consistently the same mm -hmm. um, the the nine ball rack made by outfield kind of explains the best way to try and rack them and the 10 ball i'm not sure now he's we talked about him going offensive what's he doing here with Cutting the cue ball but what's he doing with the cue ball might be just coming around. Or he killed it. Yeah, he killed, killed it, it nice. nicely. And you notice he didn't kill it with a little short stroke. No. It's much more of, hey, a lengthy stroke that applies, uh, just like anything else, more spin to the cue ball. And here he needed more of the kill side of it with a little bit of a low draw, low inside draw. Well, there's uh, Mika Immonen and Marcus Schmott. He was doing commentary with you yesterday. Yeah, Marcus Shamont, yeah. five-time Moscone Cup captain for Team Europe. And, you know, arguably Mika Eminem next to him, maybe the greatest, uh, one of the greatest for sure ever to play for Team Europe in the Moscone Cup. We saw him in a match uh, earlier today, was it, against, or was it last night? Last night against, against Ralph. Ralph's, okay. Ralph played exceptionally well. Yeah. Well, the Ralph, again, also one of the greatest ever to play for Europe in the Moscone Cup. and. The other one, probably Niels Feyen, who's a four-time MVP. Now, this is a funny shot here. Uh, he can't really hold the four that much, so it may be a four-five combo and then a four-six combo. This would be no worries if the six was on the bottom rail there, but the good thing about Chang is he won't shoot a shot to get out of control of what's going on. 
Meaning yeah. if he has to make another combination, that's fine. But he won't risk getting snookered or, oh, let me hit this harder, draw out of here, hoping the four escapes. He's just going to take what the table gives him. Yep. He should have followed down, make sure he gets up. And now either he'll bank the spot. He, he I don't think he, well, if he cuts it, he's going to catch part of the 10 and maybe come back to where the nine ball is. It's a little yeah, inside. I think he'll go above the eight, actually. I don't think he'll cut, catch enough well, of exactly the 10. Exactly, not yeah. enough. Yeah, right. Well, one thing he might do is he may cut this in the side and come back behind the 10-8 with the cue ball. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but. No, it doesn't. It, it makes sense. When you look at the shot from here, um, it looks like he can come over and pl play it two-way. Well, I know he doesn't want to play safe. I know Chang. And he can't bank okay, it to the side of the seven balls He's here. playing the cross corner. And when I say he's playing it, meaning he's calling it, I don't think he'll really threaten the pocket here. I think he wants to make sure he takes care of the cue ball and the object ball. He's going to be using the eight ball then. And he just expected when he shot the four or five for the four to fall a little bit more forward off the five ball. Yeah, he caught him with the, with the eight. Yeah, I call this one. I think I go to the right side of rail here. And give it a good chance of making it. And I know the kick is a little, you, like you feel like you may miss it. But I think that's the correct path as the right side of rail, which is what he's going to kick out here. Because you get underneath this, the cue ball's coming down here on the back side of the seven. You've got a lot of good things that can happen. So it's going to be a light, a little less than medium speed. Oh, he hit it great. I'm not sure he's going to get any reward, but pretty good effort. And now Shong has to come down here all the way down for the six ball. He's pretty straight, but he can cheat the pocket a little bit. Yeah, he's looking at where he wants to hit on that second rail and with that heavy right English drag the cue ball down past the seven. Doesn't want to hit the seven though. May fall straight in on the six, but with the seven there, it's Yeah, it's not the that's the least of your worries, right? Mm -hmm. You can always back this up and come come back out. Yeah, and the eight may pass the nine, but he'll want to fall on the seven to get to the other side of the eight, I believe. So he'll just get off the rail here with a little bit of draw, just using that little bit of angle on the six he has. Maybe kind of punch it out, maybe, what, six, seven inches? Or is he going to go ahead and draw back to underneath where he's standing? Okay, he brought it out. All the way back and over. I, that's what I thought he was going to do at first, but then I thought he might just draw between the eight and the ten. And now he's got a nice three rail angle. I don't think he's ever catching the ten ball. No. It looks, it looks to go by clean. You'll probably land the cue ball on that middle diamond and come right over well, or lower. He's looking at the side, but I think he's going to go three rails to the corner myself. I think he'll, when you try to play that side here, you could fall funny off angle and on the rail. He's going to play the side. He's done that several times now. Yeah, but he's falling that little bit of off angle. Not saying it's bad, but he's got to address going by the 10 or drawing the cue ball to the bottom rail and out. One good thing he did do, and talk about it all the time, George, is stay off the off rail the with, the, yeah, yep. with the cue ball. Yep. You, can hand, you can handle those little angles. As soon as you said that, I'm sitting there going, he's off the rail. Yeah. It's a big part of it. And he came around real nice for that, just right. Great speed. Well, along with, oh, he's getting a little pain in that shoulder, it looks like. I was just about to say that, too, that fatigue has to be there for these guys in many ways, uh, mentally, physically, along with the staff here and that's done such a fine job with CSI and Predator. I'm, I'm sure they need that day off tomorrow along with these players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll enjoy a little time by the pool or uh, just R&R. Yeah. They had a long day yesterday. Yeah, you'll see. They'll definitely get their rest, but undoubtedly they'll be back hitting some balls at some time tomorrow. Oh, sure. 
I don't think a day goes by they don't hit balls, especially when you have 300 tables running around here and then you have eight of them uh, devoted just for this for the world uh, 10 ball in this tournament here. Okay, Chang to break off in game number four. So essentially, I had one service break uh, off of yeah. James's first two two opening breaks. Nice. That's the third time I think that cue ball comes back and just parks right where it does. Maybe a little bit higher most of the time, but that one sparked like dead center of the table, which is a square hit on the one ball. Yeah, this type of shot is why you work on some drills. You set these types up a lot, just a little bit below center, coming back and forth in between the five and nine. It's the type of shot you work on a lot in different types of drills, just so you you know the tip you want to, to hit the line you want. And it becomes kind of routine, you know what I mean, George? Get out. There it goes. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm not sure what to call the drill where you have a, you use 11 balls. Mm -hmm. with uh, You start out with uh, one ball in the middle of the table, shoot to the side, then you have the two ball in caddy corner. Here's your table. Two balls down on the fir on the middle diamond there. Three balls over here. Four balls over here. Five balls down right. the bottom. When you go around with balls in the middle, you have to avoid. Okay, it looks like he's just going to come one rail up with just a well, uh, he's queuing to go two rails around, I believe now. He's going to draw around it. Yeah, a little stun shot. Doesn't want to get elevated. Okay, he played short oh. side. That's a oh, smart okay. play. If he was going to go around that way, around the. He didn't want to pull it tightly around the three, especially with the nine there. Not so much he could get snookered, but he could get yeah. elevated over the nine. This is really a nice rag. Just kind of uh, having the nine ball in the middle um, makes the center of the table kind of unaccessible. But you st just play to the side of the nine. Yeah, and just use your talent. Come sure. Coming between the eight and nine, no problem. And like that, just come through there. And nice guide. Now, I, I, it's funny, but I've, I've watched James play enough now that he has no problem stopping that ball or just laying it almost on the rail and playing the seven in the side there. Yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't think, uh, I think it, he'll cheat the pocket yeah. here. And come back up for the corner. I don't know. He just shot like it straight that. in. Yep. Nice when you can reach the balls like, like, uh, like Chang. Well, you tall guys, you know, six fours, uh, compared to some shorter people. Well, the one thing you gotta like about the man in your screen now is. Really treats every match the same. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and kind of plays in the moment. Uh, very good, very good at that. And, you know, we don't see a lot of motion from Chang, and that's just no. his personality. Uh, but just the due diligence he has and respect he has for the game. Talked about it earlier how he, I think he really looks at it like a long term thing, meaning. Let me just play the game how I know how to play it, not worry about the score so much. I mean, it's hard to. Oh, I'm surprised he went up for the side. He doesn't. He wouldn't. He doesn't do that very often. Well, uh, the shot to the corner was better because you just stun it over to the right and you're straight in for the corner uh, on the set, on the ten. Well, the main thing is you don't get these funny ones. Uh, yeah. You might get a hair off angle to the corner, but you're not going to get where you got to warp the ball and go three rails here. Oh, that's not going to get there, ladies and gentlemen. Nope. So oh, wow. Look at this spin off. But no, it's not. Still think he'll cut it in. Four feet short. This is probably one of the guys, maybe the guy I would pick for this shot. Just because we, we see him do it on the one ball lot, two <laughs> ball, get thin. He's not backing down at all. 
Just a little bit of right English, I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. just a touch, just to make sure yeah, the cue ball's secure. Watch out for three rails on the side with the cue ball with that hair right English. Okay. Oh, I don't, <laughs> ooh, it went down. We are playing world standardized rules, so no early 10 balls. You can actually see, I can see a little fatigue with, with Chang a little bit. Mm -hmm. A bit well, older than James. Well, was he's 30? James is 27. I think Chang was 34. 34. Yep. Their WPA ranking, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, Chang is uh, fifth. James is 31st. I didn't mention it. And Chang was number one in the world not long ago, just a couple years mm -hmm. ago, and, and he's been in the top five from what I can recall for the last uh, probably three and a half, four years. Somewhere around there, mm -hmm. you know, it does move around a bit. Now James has got to shake off a couple early uh, mistakes, getting snookered in a couple positions you didn't expect. the cue ball wow what, what i was i was gonna say if you watch the break we'll get a replay on it but watch initially i thought the kiss saved him meaning i thought watch the cue ball start to hydraulic towards the side pocket here okay it's got a lot of top it's a, it was about to start hooking towards the corner and now a couple kisses later yeah like pretty much it was like a double slap whap whap yeah to send it right through the corner pocket and we talked about it early, early in the tournament. And I think James is one of the prime examples we used as far as the side pocket's not in play for those guys that fly past the sides. Mm -hmm. It's those kisses in the corner that are not only amazing how, how it happens so often, but they're really kind of like a, uh, a punch in the gut. It's disheartening, say. yes, yeah. it is. It just, um, it, it's exactly how it feels, when, especially at a time like, you know, you want that break to get a game back. He got, all, it up. he got funny here, meaning he's straight in, but you actually want a little cut on this combination. That way you don't have to, like, float it or stop your ball and the three gets away from you. So it looks like to me he's maybe got to let the three come up a little bit or he's got to kind of, like, soft draw this combo. He'd much rather be above it a hair or behind it a little bit. That way he can roll this in and hold the three there. Looks like he's coming back just a little. Yeah, maybe the soft draw leaked mm -hmm. the six in like that. See, that's not the kind of shot stroke you want to put on a ball too often, right? No, but he was okay where he was because it was lined up. All of it looked line, lined up pretty straight. Allowed him to do that. Yeah. Actually, straight kind of forced him to do that, I mm -hmm. think, a little bit. The five is a little funny, though, right? Does it go in that left it side? It goes pocket? in the side. It, it goes does in the same easily? Side, sure. Okay. I think if he gets... Uh, on the same line that he is now, he just stuns it over and shoots the five next to the same pocket. He wanted to get underneath, and I don't blame him. I don't want to toy with that. If I have the choice, I'm mm -hmm. saying, I don't want to toy with that funny angle on the side. And I'm wondering if that getting on top of that nine ball a moment ago and almost not getting shape on the ten enough to make it make, is making him stay away from the side pocket here instead of shooting that nine in the Could corner be. a minute Could ago. Be. be one of the biggest things I could tell an amateur to improve on it. Go out and practice for a year and just tell yourself, let me play the corners and see how this game evolves. Uh, and I used to do it to myself in big matches and tournaments. I'd, I'd set, see myself playing silly position. I could almost feel it without knowing exactly what I was doing, meaning moving the cue ball too mm -hmm. much, uh, trying to get the easier shot too often, rather than playing what really is the correct pattern through the rack. Well, a lot of times the side pockets are kind of easier than the corners, I guess you might say, when the, the ball's available. But if you don't get on it just right, you're going to have to travel that cue ball, especially in games like eight ball. Mm -hmm. <coughs> or smaller tables. Or smaller tables, yeah, exactly. 
Well, he's navigated this rather well. And it's going to be Chang's, Chang's break. So he, he always uses his timeout at some time or another. Mm -hmm. But if James, it'd be good for James if Chang used his right now. And I don't think that's going to be the case. But next time James gets a chance, I think he needs to go to his timeout. I agree. Uh, Chang used his in the last match very well when uh, Bergman, against Bergman, he, uh, he rattled off three games in a row, won three games in a row, and Chang took a timeout. Mm -hmm. Slow him down a little bit. Well, there's been a couple of mistakes, and then that unfortunate kiss on the break right there uh, for James. So maybe a little bit of a timeout when he can when he can get it, maybe try and change a little bit of his perspective on things. Should have probably close to 5,000 plus players coming in uh, next week when the teams arrive. And we should see some great crowds for the Predator World 10 ball. Uh, above this table are, se are seven of the Predator Arena lights. Their new lighting, you can see the reflection on the balls. They're absolutely uh, brilliant. Because <laughs> they're bright. Yeah. That's a good word for it. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Innovative, effective. Both. Yeah. Both. And they're 10 feet off, they're 10 feet above the table. See the lights there, you just Ooh. got a great view of them. Look at the reflection on there. Well, the cue ball was oh, going into cool. the side, and then it ended up finding the corner. Wow. So I know it's early, uh, but I kind of feel like this is a must out for James, in a sense. Just don't think you're going to get much back from uh, Mr. Chang. So I, the only thing he's really got to worry about is the three to the four. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> it's not easy, actually. Uh, because the nine and the seven both kind of stop the cue ball travel, meaning if he has to come down with the cue ball. So mm -hmm. that means he's got to get kind of straight on the three, which kind of eliminates the lower the pocket near the nine, right? So he's almost got to shoot the three by the seven. By the seven, by the yeah. seven, ten, yeah. So, and the four is kind of making this a little bit funny. Okay, he's going to have to come one rail cross, which is fine. Can he stay right there and beat everything coming down the side of the table? He can, huh? He can. Yeah. Okay, so smart here, just knowing. Oh, he yeah, he can. He can yeah. get. Well, I don't know. He's got to go between the 10 and the 7 to go to that, on that side. He's coming over for the right side. Now he's pretty much ideal. He probably draw it by the side and over for the 4. Or will he come straight up uh, mm -hmm. using the bottom rail? I think he yeah. I we'll, think he'll do that. We'll get a good camera angle here. I think he may draw si to the side rail and just take the shot getting above the five. That's what I thought at first. Either that or, or he could even let a stroke out and draw to mm -hmm. the side rail and across the table for the four in the opposite pocket. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, he's got the right angle for that. And he's close to the ball so he can manage whatever he wants. Like this, trying to come. Oh, this didn't get there. Well, now that cut is going to bring him down table by the eight, eight six. Yeah. Well, I, I think he'll apply some inside, but the problem is uh, he's going to still get go past the five I and have go some other. distance, you know. So I think he'll cut it to what is your upper right? Oh, he's going the other corner now. Yeah, he's going to the upper right or the lower right there. He missed it. Uh, yeah. At first, I thought he was cutting it to the other side. He was. He yeah, got he started down to. He got down <clears throat> on it. And, and then, uh, well, the more I look at the one. shot, I think he played it correctly, meaning he could hold the ball easier for the five that way. And I think the both shots were equally difficult. Mm -hmm. But again, he's got to stop the bleeding. And sometimes when you can't stop the bleeding with, with an opportunity or a run out, you got to do it with your timeout. Um, you know, regroup. Well, so far, the good thing is it's a race to nine with a 4-1 uh, deficit for James. So he has a little more time to make things up. 
But the bad thing is it is still alternate break, although we've seen some great comebacks. Yeah, the six does go by the eight, but it looks like he's coming for the side pocket to me. Okay, oh, maybe the six didn't pass the eight, excuse me. So he had to so come had for to the, come side. the side. Okay, he's got options here. He can follow the ball one rail all the way where it's at now and have an easy little cut shot on the, on the seven. He can put a little more draw stroke and cut it and go between the 10-8 down for the seven. That was a good shot of that predator cue with a little bit of a white ring on the tip. And I've seen some of the guys do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Some the, the, the all black doesn't they uh, ask bother them at all, but some need a little bit of a reference up there to give them a, just a little bit of better comfort feeling, right? When they're mm -hmm. looking down the down it down the shaft. Guess it's easier to see. I'm thinking. Okay. I'm interested to see if James takes his time out after this nine and ten and a five one deficit. He will be breaking in game seven. First prize here is $17,000. Second prize is $10,000. So we're talking a $7,000 difference. Yeah, a huge match. Yep. No greater match has is worth, you know, monetarily that ma that amount of money in this event. Yeah, and in addition, next next week they're playing for $30,000. Just think, win both of these events, and only one of these guys is going to have a chance to do this. And... Uh, it's almost 50 thou. Well, and again, 10 days for all the players out there. Uh, they do appreciate an event that tries to improve from one year to the next. And, you know, this is only the second year alongside with the amateurs for our Las Vegas Open and the Predator World 10 ball. And you can see what they've done with the arena, of course, and always trying to improve that, but doubling the added money. Um, to the Predator World 10 ball just in one year's time. That's pretty pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. The other thing is they are not calling it the Q Sports International Expo, which is actually the home of the BCA Pool League World Championships and the USA Pool League National Championships. Diamond Las Vegas Open, which is not, last year was nine ball. This year it's 10 to prepare these guys for the, for the Predator World 10 ball. Uh oh. Oh my. He left it close. How many times you leave a ball there and something kisses it in? Man, that's that's hanging there. And he's got a shot on the deuce. The one ball went down. Did it go down in the corner? It did go yes, down in the did. corner. Didn't waste any time doing no, it. Dead center Either, too. Yeah. Nice replay so we can watch what happened on his break. That was a good good break. So go past the three to the rail, playing the three in the side. Opposite where side. Yeah. Oh, that's a little light, George. Yeah, it is. So James yeah. not quite settled in like he has been the rest of the, uh, the previous part of the tournament. The other thing is if he cuts this in the side, it doesn't hit the 10, does it? Well, I think if he puts speed on it, he does. And if he elevates, he certainly does. But I think he, he uh, it's close. Yeah. I think if he puts enough speed, he catches the 10, though. No. Great shot. I think you, like me, you were worried about it. Does he go right into the pocket, right? Uh, no, no. I, I, I thought I was hoping he would catch a 10 to stop it for the 4 oh, and, okay. and not have to worry about uh, 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 maybe hitting it too hard and going to the rail by the 6. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he, he's going to hit that soft to hold it for the 4. Well, it looks like he should stop the bleeding here for at least for a moment and get it to 5-2. Oof, okay. Again, still not hitting the pocket like he wants. And now, after a shot like 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 that, for instance, do you kind of talk to yourself there and say, hey, dude, you got to hit it better than that? Well, you know, I kind of, I'm sure like most guys, recognize what happened mm -hmm. during the shot. So 
Don't want to trip too much on it, but I think James, he's got to know he's playing great. He's just not settled yet, you know. He's just not comfortable, you might mm -hmm. say. It's not so much a fundamental problem, I don't think, or an issue that's going to continue uh, any particular way, meaning he's just not settled, period. So he's got to go past this, huh? Yes. I think he's taking a little chance if he tries to move it up for the eight. I think he shoots the eight up on top. Yeah, yeah that's what I say. Just Perfect. go past yeah. it. Don't try to come all the way back up for the eight. That's short, a nice, shorter pocket. Yeah, he did a nice job. He just won't get the cue ball off of the. He won't get the cue ball off the rail, but he'd be pretty straight on the ten. And he'll be making this ball, he'll be able to book his second win of this match. Oh, we're gonna. Alex Kazakis. That's right. James Aranis to make it 5-2. And then, like George just let on, a special guest now in the booth, Alex Kazakis. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Hello, hello, guys. All good. How about all, you? All the way from Greece. Here we go. Yep. So uh, have you been Far here away. for the entire final so far? Uh, no, I just arrived. I didn't know what happened before. Okay. I see the score is 5-2. So... Well, of course, Chang doing what Chang does normally. And James, yeah. you know, snookered himself a couple of times, uh, you know, in a kind of a spot you didn't expect, but getting back on the board there. And how, how's right. your experience been so far this week? I see you yeah. made a deep, pretty deep little run till you got beat. What was it about midday, late day yesterday? Yeah, I lost the, the first match. Mm -hmm. So after I win like uh, five or six matches in a row, and then I lost the fielder. In, uh, for a match to get uh, to the top 12. Uh, yeah, I lost Hill Hill. I made a mistake there. I hooked myself in. Uh, I hooked myself in, uh, in the six ball. I think yeah. Play the four ball, hook myself, and then that was it. I had a good chance, but well, it's all right. Still a great tournament. And yeah, yeah. George and I have been up here in the booth all week, but I keep I kept seeing you playing matches after losing that first match. So yeah, I, yeah. I know you were getting in stroke, right? Yeah, yeah. I also have a new use, so you know it was a little hard for me, but uh, I'm getting used to it. Well, good. I saw you Much post that right, yeah, yeah, right yeah. before the tournament. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're, it seems like it's gonna probably do do well for you with the week coming up with the Predator World Ten Ball. We'll see. We'll see. I will give my best. As always, always. always. It's the best we can do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give well, it what you got. I said it about you many times in the last couple of years uh, being in the booth, Alex. Uh, I'm not sure there's been any more improved player on the planet than yourself, and uh, and it comes really from all the hard work. Thank you. Yeah, Thank pleasure. you very much. Yeah. And there's a lot of guys out there that have improved, but uh, yeah. I'm not so sure any more than you. Well, your improvement's <laughs> shown it, too. You've won quite a bit on, on, on the Euro Tours. Uh, yeah, I'm doing really good. I won like two year tour still now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, nice jump oh, Nice shot. jump from Aranas. Yeah, and super Amazing. shot. And just a, the, probably the model of consistency on the Euro Tour, that being Alex Kazakis probably. I, you know, you, you're kind of one of them guys that never falls too far off of his speed. You know, just real steady all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. That's one of my good things. I'm always, you know, I'm always uh, trying my best. Even when I'm not feeling really good, I'm always giving my 100%. So I think this this thing helped me to always going deep in every tournament. Mm -hmm. yeah. The consistency? Yeah. Yeah, you're very consistent. This is type of my character, you know. I'm trying yeah. hard always. Right. Always. Well, I remember when I met you some five or six years ago at the U.S. Open. Um, first U.S. Open, maybe. Yeah, maybe the first one you ever went to, I think. Yeah. And there were you and Nick Milaj, mm -hmm. Nick Milaj, and uh, yeah, yeah. not and sure. Nikos, Nick. Nikos Konomopoulos, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I can Konomopoulos, and then you had a man, all obviously from Jersey or somewhere, that travels with you guys, a Greek Greek man that. Uh, the, oh no, it's uh, Louis. He lives Louis. from. He's living there in Virginia. Oh, in Virginia now. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, you could say it yourself. You weren't the player you are today, and that wasn't that long ago that you really brought your game up. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, really you mentioned you got a new queue. What new queue did you get? I got Predator. You went with Predator, so you're one of their new, part of their new stable or their stable. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, they seem to be very innovative, innovative, and, and coming out with some great equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like. I'm playing with the River right now, and uh, 
I actually I only try Revo from mm -hmm. their equipment they have, and uh, I really really like it till now. So yeah, we'll see in the future how this will go. But first impressions are really good. Yeah, it feels real good. And yeah. yeah, the balance to hit. Well, Everything. Good. It looks like the speed's pretty nice. Good shot. And it's important too, right? Because if it leaks out a little more, it's the jump cue all the, all the way, and it still might be the jump cue. I don't know. Still, yeah. It looks like he can jump this. It looks like it does go by the ten to jump. As I look at it from here. No. Wow, it's... It's tight, huh? I can't tell from here. Well, you know, he'll... Uh, Chang's got a lot of different options. He can he can jump this and bang the four round three rails trying to get a safety out of this maybe if he yeah. doesn't think he can make it. But I think he's going to jump it to make it. Yeah, I think so. I think if the ten's not in the way, you're going to try and make this ball. And the Taiwanese are really good in jump shots. Absolutely. I'm not going to impress him if he's going to make it. Okay, so a big lead for Chang, but things developing uh, quickly for James Aranis. And really ne kind of needed a few of these opportunities because sure. he, he looked a little unsettled at the beginning of this match. And that could be, you know, you know how it is when you win the hot seat. You're usually waiting. Uh, yeah. You know, this tournament's been r real nice where he, he wasn't waiting some seven or eight hours, but he's been waiting for for some time to play this match. You're right. Well, he was hitting balls, but he was also paying attention when uh, when Bergman and uh, Chang were playing. Okay, if you're going to draw it straight out, don't let up. On, he's going to come two rails, and I like that better. Just follow it down for the seven. Now, where are you ranked at so far for 2020 with the Euro Tour there, Alex? Uh, I'm number ninth right now. Okay. In the Euro Tour ranking. And uh, I just won the, like, two Eurotours before, my second Euro Tour. Oh, good. And that made me also to the team in Moscone Cup, same time. Okay, good. This win. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. I remember. You're, yeah, you're back to the late part of 2019 then. That yeah. was crazy. I was, yeah. like, 40 points behind the 39th. And uh, Ralph, Ralph and Nils didn't need to get to the last 32 to take any points, and I have to go to the final if I want to have a chance to be in the team. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who'd you beat in the semifinal to get in the final because I beat uh, Mats Sietne. Maybe mm. maybe you don't know, but uh, he's a pretty good player from uh, Norway. Obviously, he's, he's very very talented, and uh, he was not around for like one year now. But now he started again, and I think his first tournament after a year, he went to the semifinal with me. Wow! Really good player and really nice stroke. Well, slowly but surely. Yeah. He's and got three games. He does, and I believe he breaks in this next one, correct? Yes, he does. Yeah, it's we're tied at uh, it's eight games. It'll be the ninth game that'll be breaking. And down by two. I'm not impressed that Chang and Arana's there in the final because they have uh, one of the best breaks that they see in the whole uh, week mm -hmm. in Denbo. So, and break is really important in Tenbol and actually in every game. They have one of the best breaks, so. You know, let me ask you a question. We've watched these guys, when when they rack the balls, they get a more consistent break for what they think, how the balls are gonna respond. Now they have someone else racking the balls. When you have that happen, how do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I'm gonna try to break the way I'm breaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's working, I'm going to continue doing it. If it's not working, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try to go from the other side, maybe. I'm going to try to break a little bit harder or a little bit uh, softer or try and change side, you know. Something, right? Something, Try to yeah. make the proper adjustment. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. And, and pay attention to your opponent when they break. They might give you information yeah. on, uh, exactly. on what's going on. That was a not so good rack, I think. Yeah, and there's been some in inconsistent ones. And, mm -hmm. and, and in all fairness, the template, we know this, that it's there to get it a lot better, but it's not absolutely perfect all the time. That's and true. the players know how to uh, have spent so much more time with it well, that the they know how to uh, make those little adjustments to get the rack as good as you can get it. Yeah, and plus the players probably take a little more time to rack the balls. They're not mm -hmm. as... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's little things they look mm -hmm. for to make sure that that's intact before they... Uh, oh, that's a little thick. But okay. It's going to drop. Yeah. But the cue ball... 
Well, that's nice. He's going to get perfect for the side pocket. Yeah, so we're after this rack approaching the halfway point uh, nice. roughly, and, and we're going to be right here in a match. Yep. Yeah, this looks like he'll uh, navigate it pretty well. Come straight up there. A little bit harder. Well, you can play it in the corner and just come over for the five. And James. He's perfect. I talk about James, and I know he's 27, right? So people might say that's a little older for these days. Uh, uh, you know, the game's so young, right? But yeah. I feel like he's one of those, ooh, that's a simple mistake. Not saying it's going to cost him the run, but it's definitely made it much more of a headache. Uh, but I think he's one of the guys that's going to be around uh, trying to win these big tournaments for a long time. Yeah. Super talented. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the same thing. And he's he's like you. He's a he's a guy that tries hard, works hard, and and what I really like, a real humble guy that, you know, really yeah, respects yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. So not true. And you can see it also in uh, the table. You mm -hmm. know, he's not getting angry, he's never complaining. Mm -hmm. Good shot there. Yeah, great shot. Ooh. Now what's gonna happen with this cue ball? Okay. Right, nice cues. Still not out of the woods, though, right? He's got. It's a little work still. Yeah, the seven doesn't pass the eight, uh, doesn't pass the nine, so he's got to have good speed coming into position for the seven. Maybe just short side on the side pocket there. To come out two rails for the side. Okay. He's That's gonna have it in the corner, just perfect. Yeah, it's well, getting funny. I'm it's telling you, he's a little he's over still. the ball. Now he's over the ball. Yeah. That's the worst angle you can have in pull. Yeah, right. Especially it's elevated, tough. right? Yeah. It's tough in the corner. You can make it in the side. And and he's got a soft draw. It. That's yeah. the other one. So this ball tends to grab a little more, meaning somewhat of like a skid to where you hit it into the side rail more often. He hit it great, though. Wow. Good job. Still a little, a little more. longer. Yeah, he's got some work. He's got a... This looks, looks like it's pretty straight in. Yeah, it really needs the cue ball off the rail. Could get funny on the nine if he lands on the rail. Oh, my. Yeah, a little bit of body good. movement that time, right? Just a little bit, maybe? Yeah. When he delivered the cue. This is one of the shots when you're almost not not really, you know, when you have a, when you're almost straight to the pocket and you try to cheat the pocket or you try to play position with uh, you know if the with English or spin with English or spin or something it's really tricky like the way he played it I mean th there's no other way to play it actually but when you're close when the cue ball is close to the cushion you really have to focus the or not not move and just focus on the ball 100% and not too much in the position I think yeah mm -hmm. right that's what I think in these situations and now he focused more in the position so Lost. He missed the ball. Yeah, lost focus on the Th ball. That's what I think happened. Good analysis. <laughs> this is what I'm doing also. That's why I know. <laughs> 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 Whenever I'm missing, I'm focusing more in position sometimes. Absolutely. L some some type of distraction, right? Yeah. Well, in a regular match, Chang would be on the hill. Uh, but in this one, he still needs three. That's right. Race to nine here in our final, a one race final. It's one, yeah, I was about to say, one race. Which I like, actually, on a professional level. I, th I like the one race. Yeah. I know some say, well, it's unfair to the guy that, that went undefeated. But, you know, some, sometimes you come from the loser's side, sometimes you come from the winner's side, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just a, it's a wash to me that, you know. Would you agree that the longer race favors the better player? Uh, well, you would have to say that. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm, I would have to say if. You know, that's why they strategically make them the length they are, because mm -hmm. it does give a little the underdog still a, a fighting chance. You yeah. know? Well, folks, we'll be right back. We're going to time out here. All right.
Uh, I like the SP2 because one, the wrap goes all the way down. Um, the design is elegant. It's not too much, it's not too little. You know, color scheme looks really nice. And then the 12.9 Revo just fits on there perfect. So to actually go through the process and see how every shaft is made and how they can uh, tweak it this way or tweak it that way. Or, so it's, it, the process is incredible and just being able to understand it and have trust that it's made the right way and you know it's formed this way every single time when you need it. It's just, it's like uh, having a little coach on your shoulder while you're playing. The idea of Revo started when I first came to Florida in 1997. And I loved what the shaft did, what the Q did for the player. And I realized, well, there's technology out there that we have not explored yet. I really wanted to see Qs designed for people, for each player, rather than one shaft fits all. We're achieving that this year. Uh, we're making the first or our first Predator custom Revo shaft. Twenty years from now. And we are back. The players are back, and we still have Alex Kazakis here with us in the booth. Um, Alex, tell us about your tour with Predator when you went through the factory trying out their cues. Well, the factory was really, really big. That was I was impressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really pleased with the work uh, they did. You know, they have. Uh, you know, behind all this uh, technology with Revo, there's so much research and everything. I was talking with Paul, the inventor of uh, Revo, and I was really, really impressed for, of what he was telling me and how he invented it and how many tries he did to make it perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, I'm really impressed with the fact that they take you guys up there and give you a tour of the factory and show you the cues. You pick out some cues to try out different ones. Yeah, actually Good. in Boston, it's also a Revo factory. Right. Just for Revos. But yeah, I went there like uh, two and a half weeks before mm -hmm. to pick up my cues, you know, try on, it, try on it, see what I like and everything. Well, so we it was really nice. Good. Really good. impressed. Good experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, dry break by uh, by Chang. Yeah, now James should just really kind of have the cue ball on the line it's on now, kind of by the side pocket. Doesn't want to come all the way down and somehow get a little straight on the three ball, right? Mm -hmm. So just kind of over that side pocket, I think somewhere around there is. Uh-oh. Oh, he missed. Okay. What would you do with this, Alex? Well, probably I will cut it. Yeah. To make it's it and get up on the three? Yeah, get out on the three. It's not that tough cut, but. No. No, and Chang, Chang, Chang goes offensive a lot, so yeah. like mean, most of the great players, mo you know. Most of the players, yeah. I think when you have a chance to to run out the table, I think you have to take it almost every time. Yeah. Because now you have a very good, very easy safety, as you can see. But when you get your opponent on the table, it's always you never know what's going to happen. You know, you can give your resave, and all these players, yeah. they're playing great resaves. So always 
especially with eight, nine balls on the table, you can kick safe a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just imagine, George, if you broke the balls and you were left with this shot, you would love it. Oh, you know, I'd, be, like, I'd, be be going like, to, I'd be taking that cue ball very, towards that eight ball. Well, yeah. you'd be very excited to get that shot, right? Sure. So what's, what's the mentality of the same thing when you come off a miss? Oh, he could have left me easier, but it's still a pretty nice shot to start with. Exactly. I'm at the table, yeah. Especially when position is there, too. It's mm -hmm. one thing if he couldn't gain position taking on a tough shot, but mm -hmm. when these guys see a reward from making a tough shot, they're going to go for it. Exactly. I'm always thinking of uh, the percentage in every tough shot, tough shot I have, you know. Sure. I'm thinking, you know, in my mind, how much percentage is to make the ball and uh, run out and how much percentage I have to if I'm playing safety like before, you know. And this two ball for Chang and for every great player, it's like more than 50% <coughs> to make the ball. Mm -hmm. So this kind of ball, you're always going to take it. But if it's a tough shot, like you have like 20% to make it and then you have a safety that probably you're going to make it 30, 40%, you're going to play the safety. Yeah. You know, but you're, it's something like that. This is how I'm thinking most of the times in uh, when I'm playing. Well, and one good thing to always think about, I think, is at this level especially, is there really is hardly ever a jam-up safety, meaning, like, no route for these guys to make the hit. Normally, you're not going to get ball in hand that much off of, uh, you know, you just burying them with the cue ball where they have no kick. Now, guys do miss kick shots that they should hit, but most of the guys either jump out of a safety and make good contact or they make a kick shot, so... When you get a chance to take it away, is that a scratch cross side? He wow. went right into the pocket, right into the pocket. And he just caught the five a little thin to the pocket, I think. That's yeah. why I caught yeah, the did, side. he did overcut it a little bit. But, yeah, like when, uh, on these safeties, sometimes when you, when you force a player to come with a great shot, a lot of them will, especially at your level. Mm -hmm. you know, you, they'll come with that great shot, and you'll sit there and say, well, that's, that's a one in ten. But guess what? You got it. You got it, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why you get shots that they don't forget about. Uh, it takes a long time. You remember them your entire life. True that. Okay, so after a, a missed two ball. We could get pretty close here. This could, this, uh, this could end up at 6-4 with James Brakey. End of this game. And then you could say that Chang is, you know, the favorite in this match, and he's the favorite in a lot of matches over guys. It's just slight, but really you got to ignore that. It's all about what you do with your opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, if James gets a few more opportunities at the table than Chang does, well, and my eyes, he becomes the favorite in the match. True. Which match um, do you think uh, really sticks out in your mind that you played here at this tournament? Uh, on what, uh, what do you mean exactly? Uh, the, uh, which one of your opponents in this, during this tournament uh, sticks in your mind that you had the most trouble with or uh, oh, most uh, exciting uh, match? Most exciting match you had yeah. the, so far this week. Uh, <clears throat> I think with uh, Mika and uh, Filler. With Mika, I was uh, I just make one mistake in 2-0. I was mm -hmm. down 3-0. And then uh, I came back from 6-3, and I won that match. Actually, in 6-6, six, six, uh, he missed the 10-ball. Oh, wow. I was a bit lucky. But until that moment, I played really good. And, uh, you know, I took my chances and, you know, fighting back the match. And then with Filler, I was up 2-0. Then he went up 4 Two. Then I went up 6-5, and then he won 7-6. So also with Filler, was excited much to oh. play. Good. It was a good match. So with, so with Mika, you stayed in the match. You made it possible to force that error at the very yeah, end. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. And I remember I made a really tough run out in 6-3 to, to, to make it the 6-4. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice, yeah. Well, here we go. We can come within one game if you can uh, give us a little break and run. Yeah. Something he's done a lot of. Uh, there was one match. In fact, in his match, in his match against Chang to begin with, he ran out four times in the race to seven. He hit those great. 
And those balls reacted a little more like the guys are used to. Now, what's this two ball doing over here near the side pocket? It's, uh, well, it's not resting on the rail, but it's pretty close. Well, I think he can take the cut on it. He can kill the cue ball kind of off the point, right? Because he can't get straight in on it with the eight being there. Yep. yep. So he's got to take a little bit of a cut on the two, but I think it's playable. The it, triple is right there near the pocket, so. Yeah. And if, he, if the cue ball stops right in the corner, he will have angle for the five to the corner again. So I think he's okay. I like him on that aggressive line there, well, right? Trying that. to get oh, a little yeah. closer to that Risky. two ball. Yeah, but well, but there's some step. reward mm -hmm. in it, right? Exactly. So. Yeah, no. he's now it's impossible to miss it. Mm -hmm. This is so ball good. in hand shape here. Yeah, he'll just play a little bit off the point. This might come back towards the eight. Oh, no, it stayed right over. Good shot. Yeah, the six is down here near the five, so he only has one pocket for the seven, which is the nearest pocket, so he'll have to pay attention when he gets on the six to get properly on the seven. James should make this a one-game match. And he ended up on the right side of this, too. That was a good shot. And he really had a choice. That's a little tricky. Yeah, did he get a little straight here? where he can't necessarily like bump the 10 over or nothing like that. He may have to go past this ball a little bit, mm -hmm. huh? He had a little angle to the 10. He will bump the 10, I think, but otherwise. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He's, he's fine, good shot. And just straight up the table here with a little high right English. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of right, but a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he should stay above this ball as well, maybe. Somewhere around the head string, something like that. Perfect angle. Yeah. Very well done. And the same thing here, just straight up the table, taking a little bit of a cut on the eight. So James definitely settling in after a couple of mistakes to open our match. He's ended up with the proper angle in every shot so far. Well, he really gets through the rack well because, like I talked about all week, he, like a lot of these guys, they try to use the natural path of what the cue ball wants to do for the most part. If you can use the natural True. path, your touch is going to be so much better. True. Makes the game so it will look so easy. Right. You have always the, the right angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just it, rolling for shape. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it yeah. keeps you making a lot of the same strokes, right, mm -hmm. Alex? Yeah, you yeah. don't change your speeds that much. That's true. And there we are. Now it's a tight race to nine with the game difference. True. He's still back. A was it you call it a half a break? Well, just a, a service just break. A service yeah, break, like yeah. tennis. Mm -hmm. um, still down to service break, but. Uh, and Chang knows that Aronis is in the building, that's for sure, at six to five. This is your second year here at the Rio for, for these tournaments, right? You were here last yeah, year? Yeah, I was yeah. here also last year. Yeah. Long days here, you could see, Chang. Uh, Long day for you yesterday as well. Uh, yeah, a couple days in a row actually for oh, you being 13, on the one loss yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen <laughs> or fourteen hours. How many matches did you play this last? Uh, do you do you even think that way? Do you think I've played so many matches this tournament? Uh, well, not really. But you know, the last match I started like uh, twelve thirty, which you know the schedule went a little behind. Some matches where they were late, and you know sometimes this happens. So the only thing I was bothered with is that if I win that match. Play at 10 a.m., huh? I'm playing at 10 a.m. <laughs> and we finished that match at 2.15. Oh, at wow, yeah. So uh -oh. Ooh. I, I actually was watching your match late last night. Yeah. And, uh, and, and and I'm sitting there going, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. i got to get to bed. Yeah. <laughs> i got to get some yeah, sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it looked like he was scratching there, like the cue ball was about to hook towards the side, and it got a friendly kiss. Uh, we couldn't see it exactly from that replay, but. And there Take it is. a bit of a roll, and now pretty straight in here on the one. All he's got to really worry about really is the two to the four for the most part. Yeah, he needs a good angle here for the, for the four. 
Uh, he could lay up for the side, just underneath it on the side rail, and just kind of mm. come down. I mean, I don't like the sides like that myself. Uh, yeah. I'd rather play for the corner, but I didn't like that shot. But maybe I will, with the angle he has, maybe I will leave a angle for the cue ball to play two cushions after for the four. Like a he's going to play the draw. Yeah, he's going to play the draw. You know, this is a little. No, he have a perfect angle right now, but sometimes it's a little risky. If you're underheated and you're completely straight, you're going towards, you mm. will go towards the six and the ten. Yeah, but does no. he have to cheat this pocket a little bit to make sure he's clear of the six and no, ten? Mm, I or think, does he? I, I think he's okay. The way I see that. I think that. it's close. I think it is close. He could even get out on the high side and, and go rail first on the four with no problem with the eight being there. It's really hard to miss it. Meaning, if he oh. wanted to stay on the center of the table and take the cut shot on the four. Yeah. He wouldn't have to come back if he didn't want oh, he to. Hit that so nice. And he cheated the bucket a little bit. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. was he was almost straight. Good shot, but now does he have to use that eight a little bit to help him move the cue ball in position for the five? Or is he just pounded a little to get the cue ball out and it's still gonna draw back underneath the ten? Hmm. That's pretty I think tight. so. I think so. This is where you don't really guide it. You just kind of trust it. Good like shot. That, oh, yeah. What a shot. Risky, but good. Yeah. I think it was the right shot. To play. I think so, too. And as much carry as he had on the ball, much meaning force, even if he catches a little sliver of the 10, he's probably still going to come out mm -hmm. okay for the five. True. Because he didn't baby it. You know, he mm -hmm. kind of put a little more in, in into the shot. Oh, look at this. Now he's got a stop shot and then uh, the NDA. Now, Ten Alex, ten. you've been playing professionally now, what is it, about five years, I guess? Mm. For the most part, full-time professional? Full-time, well, I start playing, I mean, I decide, I was playing for my 15, I'm 28 now. Right. And around my 20s, I decide that I wanted to try to be a professional, you know, 20, 21. So then it's when I started playing almost all tournaments and everything. And around 22, I think I came here first time in USA. Right. 21, maybe. So, yeah, let's say. Yeah, six years, seven years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, I mean, I, I'm doing really good the last four years. Yeah, that's what I, you know, I've really recognized. Yeah. But uh, I was talking about Chang. I, I remember seeing him some 10 or 12 years ago, and he was steady. But he was a guy that also, like yourself, had to put in the time to get to where he's at now. Uh, do you recall him from years ago? Um, I know you've only been around it like a six, I seven years. but can't remember, to be honest. Yeah, well, we used to go overseas and play a lot of tournaments in, in Taiwan and Japan and whatnot. Oh, so you know him many years. Oh, yeah, many, many years. Yeah, and he wasn't that top five player back then. He was a guy that also had to go through the bumps and bruises and, and, uh, right. and really improve his game. That's giving me some confidence now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, saying? yeah. He's earned <laughs> it, you might say. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You've got to work. Yeah, you've got to work that's at true. it. Very few players come along. There's very few players that come along and, you know, 19, 20, 22 years old, and they're playing. Winning know, big tournaments. Winning big yeah. tournaments. Yeah, yeah. we always talk about Phil or how he kind of hits exception. the scene winning. Yeah. And, you know, that's not the usual thing. Uh, most of us have to go through and, and kind of get beat a little bit before yeah, we. A lot, maybe. Yeah, a lot, yeah, maybe. A lot. <laughs> and still get beat a lot. Uh, yeah, to well, continually improve. We were talking earlier, and you said 28 to 41. Yeah. Remember that? That used to be the prime yeah, back in the be, day. I think it's come down. We said it's, it's come down because of all the information available to you players. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all, sport, all sure. sports in general, I think, in the world have gotten younger, meaning the players at a younger age have, uh, are, are so impressive. Mm -hmm. Plus uh, technology has yeah, come along, yeah, too. Absolutely. That's helped a lot. Yeah, training. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just like Little League Baseball, we used to all play city ball, but now they have select sports where – the kids get a really uh, a really professional type of training at a young age for oh, baseball, sure. football, sure. soccer, all those sports. I'm sure it's the same in Europe. Mm -hmm. Where I saw, That's like, true. when we were at the Kremlin Cup, which uh, you haven't won every one of the Kremlin Cups, but you sure kind of own that tournament. It seems like you're almost always in the finals. But it's crazy. But this year <laughs> we played at a venue, to, and you noticed the soccer fields next door where mm -hmm. the kids were getting uh, professional training every day, it seemed like, all day. Yep. 
Yeah, what have you won that once in finals three times, uh, second three times, or? I One time I won, two times second, one two, time. ta two times third, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one time last eight. <laughs> So yeah. I, gu I guess you call yeah. that tournament more than your lunch money, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I'm playing always good in that tournament. Good. You know, it's it's funny because I think that does happen. You just get settled sure. in a certain location, and you feel good in, in that in that location. Yeah, exactly. and it's, it, it drives you. Yeah, yeah, and it's sometimes the equipment. Like I've always liked Virginia. The the dime, the tables are always at the U.S. Open. Now the international. They always seem to play a little tougher, right? Wouldn't you agree? The international tables always seem to get a little sticky. Because of the humid near to exactly, see, right? Exactly, right. Yeah, yeah. So I always exactly. felt like that, you know, that I'm from Houston. That's kind of the conditions I was raised under the same. All uh, right. So I kind of always felt like I liked it better there than most tournaments. He's got a long shot here. Well, was that a rollout there? Yes, it was. Okay. Now, hard not to want to use the 6-7 as a snooker here, right? Bank the one back down, or is he going to cut at this? No, I think he will play safety. What you said, try to hook him the six and the seven. I'll tell you, Chang is a pretty darn aggressive player, though. But maybe you have to be careful. The cue ball. Careful, the cue ball the, the, goes the, to the, the corner. The, yeah, you know? yeah. If you go that way, cue ball goes right to the corner. Ah, uh, no. No, he Either can get to the bottom yeah. rail pretty yeah. easy, actually. The thing is here is, I think you have to not get the one all the way back down. I think he's cutting at this, is what I think. I think he's going for the shot, trying to play position. All right, hit it thin. He's going to get a little fortune, I think. Yes, he is. I think he might have played that by design. Oh, no, no. no he, was he was trying, trying to, make to make it. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I say that because of the three. Right, but he was actually, well, if he hits it thick, though, he goes four rails and mm -hmm. lays on the side rail for position, for position. on the three eight. This, this is one of the shots I was telling you. It's it's worth it to cut the shot that, that that you have like how much percentage do you think he had to play this shot and make it like right right twenty percent maybe maybe ten percent was really really tough. Okay, so things not going James's way. Oh. Like like Alex said, maybe Chang went for a low percentage shot and got away with it. Yeah. Now James makes an, a a pretty decent low kick shot. If it doesn't lay in front of the side, it's probably hard to run out. Mm -hmm. So what I think Chang before he played the wrong shot, like, like I said before, like 10-15 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. minutes about the percentages, I was thinking in every shot. But yeah, he get a little laggy here, like kick. Yeah, and I really, you can see it, I think everyone can see it, that Chang really showing that he's pretty tired. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the, those, those types of mannerisms right there are a little bit more of, man, I'm ready for this to, <laughs> to be over with one way or another. Well, he did play back-to-back -back matches right here. And well, played one on the other side before he came over. And I think it was a yesterday more than today. Sure. You know, just the, you know, he's a thinker. You know, it's just like yourself, Alex. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say that you're going to get a little bit more worn out that uh, more than a player that's not using their brain much. Mm -hmm. You know, when you play a lot of matches, not only the physical side of things wear you out, but you thinking all the time can can really kind of make it hard on that brain. That's really true. That's why you need also to work out. Oh, well, absolutely, yeah. It, it, Plus you know, the stamina to play the stamina. all these long hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. I don't think you want to do <laughs> Look at that smile. I don't I think I got a picture of that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's his w when he usually wins the tournament smile. He usually doesn't show that one very often yeah. during the match. Yeah. I don't think he wanted to game from this side of the seven. I, don't I thought so he was either. trying to go between. The, he, when when he measured up the shot, he measured between the six, seven. That's why he was laughing. <coughs> he missed the position completely, but he get a little lucky. You think the table maybe is changing a little bit? You think it tends no. to do that as the time goes? I don't think so. He just mishit it maybe or misjudged it. I think he misjudged it because what what you said. He's tired. He's mm. playing so many matches. Mm. His mind, you know, sometimes our mind don't think too clear when you're when you're playing a lot of hours getting tired you know i think this is what happened plus the shot clock also is not helping yeah he keeps looking back at it a little bit yeah the shot clock makes you sometimes make some mistakes that you will never do when you don't have the shot clock. Mm -hmm. right but i think it's a good part of our game the it, shot clock it, it's the best I, I think yeah in, in every i think in every tv table there has to be a shot clock i agree 
Yeah. It's more it's more excited to see and it's more excited also the players. It, it makes you make some mistakes that you'll never do. Sure. When you don't have a and that makes it feel you know more. I will not say nice, but more excited. Yeah, mm -hmm. that absolutely. May, that maybe you will make the mistake because of the shot clock, but your opponent will go to the table and maybe you will do the same. You right. know, it's, it's about the same thing. It's about who can handle it better. Do you think that sometimes maybe the shot clock makes you pull the trigger and it actually helps you? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, sure. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It could, I you saw it there. last year in Russia, sure. actually, in a shot that Fetter made that I'm not sure he's going to make. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Remember yeah. the eight ball he got yeah, down yeah. and fired in in the corner? In the corner, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think if he had to think about that a little longer, maybe he plays safe or maybe misses the ball. Ex exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. This is what the shot clock makes you. It makes you not, you know, you think one or two shots and you have to decide in 10 seconds what you play. And, you know, when you have a completely tough shot, very tough shot, and you, you see only the pocket, you're going to play the pocket because you don't have time. Well, and you sometimes, know. you know, because... We're playing so much and practicing so much. Sometimes we're making these tough shots. Yeah. Well, well, he's on the hill here. Yeah, and you've played the Moscone now three times or twice? Is two times. Two times, yeah. Um, so certainly you all practice with the shot clock for pre preparing for the Moscone Cup. But, mm -hmm. but do you find yourself maybe saying, maybe I should practice with the shot clock a little more often during the year for events like this and other big events coming up? You know, just to have you at that routine prepared a little bit more, because 30 seconds is not a long time. No, it's really a short time. Yeah, that, that's the truth. But uh, for me, not really, to be honest. And actually, I like to play with a shot clock. Uh oh, he's brought uh -oh. this back too far. Uh oh, he's brought this back too far. Ouch! No, and sure. that might be a product of sitting in the chair for a little bit, huh? Well. Yeah, well, the thing I saw at first with James when when he got snookered, it mm -hmm. was mainly getting snookered. He really didn't miss that much at the beginning of the match, so his timing was off a little bit, and and consequently there it looked looked the same because mm -hmm. he was certainly trying to play the two in the lower right hand corner. Well, well, this is tight here by that five. He's gonna try to get the careful for the side. Okay. Well. So what looks like probably one shot on the two ball, you could say is probably going to be the one to end this match if he can get this down. Exactly. Yeah. The way he's played and, and the way he's pocketed balls and controlled the cue ball, that's a pretty safe bet. But there are, what, uh, nine balls on the table. Yeah. You can see, though, it won't be much cue ball movement after the four. The five, six, seven, mm -hmm. eight, nine, and ten all on one end of the table. And these guys are so good at the long position. How how great do you think they are at the short position shots? You know, where you're just moving a little bit here, a little bit there. I really think this is the shot of the tournament, or to win the tournament, excuse me. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, pretty good. He's glad it's over with, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he have a little work to do with the five and the six, I think. I think the six goes in the side, though, so mm. it's definitely got some options. It goes by the eight in the corner. Well, he can run the cue ball from the four to where, about where the six is and come across and play the six on the opposite side if it doesn't go by the seven. Yeah, this is the one I would have worried about, yeah. getting close to the five. That's oh, the one I would have worried right. about. Uh, this this shot here, falling straight in or close to straight in, could, could really huh, determine a lot of things on where he has to shoot that five from. Well, now... Wish I could see if that seven ball goes by the the six ball goes by that seven in that side. I'm pretty sure it does. It, does. it looks yeah. like it does. Yeah, because Chang's the type that will notice if he has to look at that six ball later. That'll really influence how he plays the four and so on. Well, he's taking a long shot here, and that six must go by. If it doesn't, he's banking. Well, this is the yeah. type of stuff you practice for, right? And that's another thing, the shot clock that I think. I think it also shows the guys that are prepared more. And not for the shot clock itself, but just for the game itself. If their mind is right, if they know they're thinking right, they're hitting the ball well, seems to me the shot clock doesn't bother them as much. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good point. They're not questioning their decisions, you know? Okay. Wow. I had that great. Very nice shot. So he's made two key shots on this rack, the opening one and that one. 
If it just kind of stop there and take on the seven in the corner, which would drop him down for the eight pretty easy. Looks like he's going to roll forward past the seven. A little yeah. body movement there, wasn't there, when he <laughs> shot that? <laughs> he kind of rushed it. <laughs> well, now do you draw the ball down one rail and spin it down to the low rail, or do you, is the eight hanging enough to where he can just stay above it? Oh, yeah, the eight's okay. Yeah, the eight's yeah, okay, I think, yeah. I think he can just stop it or just or roll, roll forward, just, maybe. Yeah, ball forward. Well, he needs these four balls. Anything short of a earthquake, Just he's probably going to get him. Yeah, he's probably going to get him. Is he pulling this between the nine ten? It looks like. Yeah, I like that. Good shape. Taking nothing for granted. Is he coming across? No. He's no, just he's gonna just going to ease gonna this come, in. Ease it in. Shoot from there. Now yeah. he's smiling. That's that winning <laughs> smile that I'm used to seeing. Usually don't see it beforehand, though. There it is, folks. Yeah, Chang Jung Lin takes it down. Well James, done. James Rana, a great tournament. Yeah, great tournament. Great tournament. Alex, yeah. thank you very much for stepping in the booth with us and yeah, joining us. Also. Yeah. That's awesome. And Thanks good, for coming in. Good luck this week. Yep. Thank you. And thank you, George. Jeremy, it's um, been a great tournament. We've yeah. got one more to work. That's right. That's awesome. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. It'll be Monday for the Predator World 10 Ball.